Good evening, coaches. This is Michael Cantrell with Championship Coaching Systems. Glad you guys are on with us tonight. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Drew Gibbs is going to be our presenter tonight for uh, End Zone. He's going to be talking about beating the 3-4 with one back power. A little housekeeping for you. We're going to re record the session tonight. We're going to turn it around and have it up on the site in about a week. So if you want to dive back in and, and review it, you're welcome to do so. You can ask questions uh, during the presentation. Uh, there's a little questions tab on your go to webinar console. You can type your questions there and we'll hold them to the end and then I'll ask them for you. But feel free to type as many questions as you want and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, if you have any additional questions after the, the webcast is over, uh, feel free to email those to me, Michael. Uh, you can send it to questions at championshipsystems.com. Again, questions at championshipsystems.com. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Coach, you ready? Ready to go. All right, you're on. All right. Uh, good to be here talking to you guys. Um, the play that we're going to talk about today is our one-back power play. At Ramapo, we call that Bruin to the right and Bull to the left. Um, I think it's very similar to, to Knoll's Tampa play. Uh, we've been in the end zone system for three years now, and uh, this past year was the first year we went with the Bruin and Bull, went with the one-back power. Uh, our core play is the Zorro play, and we spend one day a week practice, practicing Zorro, Colt, Slip. You know, usually Tuesday is our zone run day. Um, our second day on Wednesday, we go to our pin and pull stretch, the giant shark play, and uh, and our full zone stretch, boss. And then uh, my first two years in the system, we, we were Detroit and a little bit of uh, guard trap, tackle trap as our, our next day or our next run play that would go in the offense. Uh, we found that we weren't getting a lot out of those plays, the Detroit play, especially we were getting something out of it, but uh, our base concept, trio right, say Detroit odd, um, I felt was very similar to our, our trio right uh, Linda 95 play. So we felt like we could drop the Detroit play, still have the screen, which gave us stick screen as opposed to stick draw, and, and then add a little bit more of a downhill run play in the one back power. And uh, it, the one back power play won our league championship game for us, gave us a a little bit more physical downhill run where the back had a, a more decisive aiming point and a more decisive uh, downhill attitude. And uh, it worked out very well for us this year. I uh, didn't feel like we were missing a lot not having Detroit in the game plan. As much as it's a great play, and, and I love it, um, we didn't have a running quarterback, so we, we didn't use a lot of uh, you know quarterback Detroit. And, uh, and again, as I said, I thought we got out of it stick screen as opposed to stick draw. And, and we were able to get another run in, in the Bruin and Bull one back power play. So move along. What do we what do we like about it? For us, it's an inside run that's a change up to zone. Obviously, we, we hang our hat on the inside zone play, but this gives us that change up play. Uh, I like the downhill attitude for the tailback. We're going to read this A to B to C gap, uh, to A to B to C to D on one side of the ball. So our guy knows, you know, I, our guy knows he's he's heading right or he's heading left. Um, and he's got a much more downhill attitude. We're able to adapt it to a number of different formations, and then we're able to incorporate our key screen game and our pop concepts uh, to protect the play. So this year for us, it was a primary play in certain game plans against the 3-4 defense. Uh, and when you attack the 3-4, I think some uh, you have to have some variations. Uh, when I learned the system, you know, we draw it up on the board, we draw everything up against four down, two high, and, and most of your run plays are excellent against that. Um, but then when people start climbing into the 3-4 defense, getting into the eight-man front, uh, you need to have some other options available for you. So out of our 10 personnel, our thought process versus the 3-4 defense is we are going to run the play away from the fourth rusher. Now, our base end zone philosophy is to be a tempo team. Get up on the ball, run plays as fast as we can. This is one of the few plays that we'll check. And um, I don't think it hurts us because we do so much out of tempo, zone, pin and pull, stretch, shark. The, those are the things we hang our hat on. Our passing game, we're up on the ball, you know, getting a play run every 15 seconds. So 
You know, like when we call the one back power, we may need to take a look at the defense, especially against the three four, to figure out where that fourth rusher comes from. So we may check the play uh, when we're running it out of ten personnel against a three four. We can check with me, run the play right or left, and we just have to move the back from one side to the other, or we can combo with inside zone. We like to run the zone play at the fourth rusher when we're attacking the three four. So if the back is on the right. If the fourth rusher is coming from our left, we run the zone play, if the, um, and we run it in. If the fourth rusher is coming from the side of the back, now we can run the, the one back power away from the fourth rusher. So we wouldn't even have to move the back. It could be a zone power check, or it could be a power power check and move the back from one side to the other. Um, when we put the back away from the play side on this, the quarterback reads the edge rusher, who's the sixth man in the box, for his handoff or keep. Um, we also have a, an adjustment to the play, which is our out call, where the backside tackle blocks out and the quarterback reads the B-gap. And again, 10 personnel, 3-4 defense. We're controlling the secondary with our key games and our pops. When we go to 11 personnel, now we add a tight end. Okay, now we don't need to check it as much. Now it can be a call it and run it play. And in 11 personnel, it's a good play for us into the 4-I. A lot of guys have asked me over the years, you know, what do we do against the 4-I? That kind of takes away your cutback at times on his own play. This is a good play to, to attack that 4-I or run at the 4-I B-gap defender uh, when you attach a tight end. Right? Again, with 11 personnel, we control the secondary with keys and pops. And in this case, we may make a, a pop call off the front side support player. So now we may have to put the back play side, which is our flip call, which we've done an awful lot. And that's been very good to us. So let's take a look at some of the diagrams and, and exactly how we put it in. Now, before we do that, here are our check with me packages. And that's what we're going to run first. The different check with me is either Bruin or Bull, one back power right or left run it away from the rush outside linebacker, run it to the field versus too high, and we would change our back's alignment. Or we could go bull, which is to the left, and Zorro odd to the left, and now we just keep the back on the right. right? If they give us a rusher from the left, the fourth rusher from the left, we'll run Zorro odd. If they give us the rusher from the right, now we run the bull play. So that's how we'll organize our, our two check with me situations. So here's our dual right formation from the middle of the field. We're running bull, which is our power, one back power to the left, and we're going to key both sides. That's a base way of installing the play. Uh, it's a good start for us because that's what we do in the zone play as well. So on the right side, we have the Y on the ball, so we're running key one on the right, all right, and key two over here on the left. In this diagram, the defense is rolling down to the Y side. All right, so we would probably give a, you know, a, uh, a lightning call with, for, for us is a, a check the snap. So we give a ready, set, go. No play is called. We see where those defenders are rotating. All right, so we know that the, the safety is rolling down to, the, to our right, so we're going to check the play to the left and run our bull play from there. Left tackle has an on block. He's going to on block that man, take him wherever he wants to go. If he had an inside shade, he'd wash it down. If he's got an outside shade, he's going to block him out. The center and the left guard, they're going to double the nose to the backside linebacker. All right, we want to get some good push there if we can. All right, get our center coming off hard, get our left guard stepping down hard. We want to take that nose backward off the ball into the Mike linebacker. The right guard is going to skip pull around for the front side backer. Right? That takes a little bit of coaching and a little bit of reps because we don't know if, in this case, we do know because we're checking it that we're going to have an open B gap, but sometimes we could get a, a defender in that B gap and then the puller has to get a little bit wider. He's got an open B gap, he sticks it right up in there and he's going to block that backer. To the backside, we use a base pull check technique that uh, you know most teams use on power. He's going to step down into the B gap all right, and then wheel back on that end. Generally, that end is going to be on a hard inside move if you're getting a rusher from the outside there. So that's going to be the toughest block in this play. 
The one thing that makes it a little easier than zone is the ball's not going to cut back in the backside A gap. So all he's got to do is keep that end on the line of scrimmage, eventually run it. It could run down here into the nose guard, but he's going to take a good hard inside angle and get that end cut off. Our tailback is going to take a path similar to his zone path across the ball. His aiming point is A gap, B gap, C gap, D gap. So he's downhill in the front side A gap, and the quarterback is going to read the edge rusher, okay, before he hands the ball off. Now, in the defense I've got drawn up, this looks like a base cover three look. So base cover three, which we don't see very often, all right, we would probably check front side for a key. We could easily throw the key pre-snap on the front side. We could easily throw the key pre-snap on the back side. If they were in cover one with a one high safety where the will linebacker was on our F and the strong safety was on our Y and we didn't have real soft corners, that's when our quarterback would come away from those keys and go right to his handoff key. So there's a lot of crossover and carryover from our, our Zorro play here uh, for the quarterback and, and for our outside receivers in the key game. And it was a simple check. We got up on the line of scrimmage. We figured out where they were adding the fourth rusher, and we checked the play away from the fourth rusher. Okay. Here's another diagram. Same formation, same check with me situation, but this time they rolled down to the F side, bringing the Will linebacker. So now we call our Bruin play. And again, no different for the outside receivers. Key one and key two on the outside. Bruin is to the right, so the front side tackle. Right, he's got the on block, taking that end wherever he can. We double the nose to the backside backer. We use a skip pull technique here. And, and one of the things we do in our skip pull technique, we take a little bucket step with the inside foot before we skip out. And uh, what we found is with our splits being as big as they are, and we're trying to get three feet on the split, We'll settle for two and a half, but, but our goal is to get three. And in the power game and in our, our shark game, we just find sometimes we get a little bit more penetration. So we do take a bucket step before we skip pull, stay square, get up the field on that Mike linebacker. Quarterback's got the read on the backside. And again, in most cases, if they're blitzing that outside backer or adding that fourth rusher, He's going to be assigned to the quarterback in the 3-4 defenses that we see. So this ball gets handed off uh, about 100% of the time uh, on this particular look when you've got a, an edge rusher coming free like that. So that would be the check out of dual right, Bruin or Bull, against the 3-4 based on which outside linebacker is rolling, is blitzing, and, uh, and which safety is rolling down. All right. The next uh, variation of the play is we make what is called an out call. And now we have that backside tackle block out. He blocks the C-gap, and now the quarterback reads the B-gap defender. Uh, this is an outstanding play if you've got a quarterback that can run the ball a little bit. So if we're seeing a team that plays a lot of cover three and the ball's on the hash, often they'll, they'll play three to the field, so they'll put the free safety in the middle, roll the strong safety down, and we'll get a drop outside linebacker into the boundary here. So we kind of can predetermine possibly where that edge rusher is going to come from when we are on the hash based on the coverage they like. If they're a big one high team, we'll probably see the fourth rusher coming from the boundary more often than not. If they're a big two high team, excuse me, if they're a one high team, the fourth rusher comes from the field. If they're a two high team, the fourth rusher is going to come from the boundary generally. So here we can either use the check system like we did, or we can formation it when we're on the, uh, on the hash and figure out what they're going to be in. But now the, the call is bull out. Uh, so the quarterback would just say to the line, bull out, bull out, and everybody's blocking the bull blocking scheme except for the backside tackle who's out on that outside linebacker. Now, this is good when the defensive end is smashing into your tackle. You kind of get him, you get him held, and you get the ball handed off. But if he's on a hard angle move, right, either a long stick into the A gap 
or shooting that bead gap hard for the gap tip, for the guard tip. When the guard pulls away, that end should come screaming down for your tailback, and now the quarterback's got a great release right through the bead gap uh, and a big chance to run the ball. When, when we run this play, the backside linebacker is a little bit slower now than it would have been years ago. Years ago, when a guard pulled one way and a tailback headed one way, boy, that backside linebacker, that Mike, he'd be screaming over the top. He'd be running. We run so much of the shark play where we pull the guard, we send the back, and we throw pops in behind the linebacker. But all of a sudden, the linebacker doesn't run over the top quite as hard. That guard pull, tailback go key is not as solid for him as it used to be. So that linebacker does play this a little bit slower. And, and I'll show you some tape. You know, you, you think to yourself, well, they double the nose with the slant going this way. The linebacker should come over the top and make the tackle every time. But when you're, when, you're, when you're throwing pops in behind him and you're doing some of those things, all of a sudden that, that linebacker doesn't play the guard pull and the tailback quite as hard as he used to. Uh, if he is coming over the top and you catch him in this out scheme, though, where the end chases the guard, your quarterback has a great run. Uh, we didn't get a lot of mileage out of this because we didn't have a run, great running quarterback. Um, but we are a 3 4 defense ourselves, you know, and one of our opponents does a great job with this play, and they've hurt us us with it, and uh, and now that we've got a runner at that spot, we think that'll be a very nice way to attack that 3-4 defense. So make the out call. Now you read the B-gap defender instead of the C-gap defender, and again, if he's chasing your pulling guard, you should have a pretty big opportunity for your quarterback to, to run the football in there. Um, run it to the field. So here's your two high defense, two safety defense, almost always adds the fourth rusher from the boundary, at least the ones that we play. So now we would call Bruin out, the run to the right. Nothing changes here. Um, in terms of the blocking scheme, the left tackle blocks out on the fourth rusher, and we're reading that end who's the B-gap defender. Now we get the hard corner to the field. We can still run key two, um, and it's a possibility that our quarterback might throw one of the keys pre-snap. But when we run this play, the other thing that we can do is we can make a block signal to the front side and tell our front side F to block that Sam linebacker. Um, in this defense, he might be folding inside to help in that B gap, especially when the tail backs away. We see a few teams that, that do that. So you got a couple choices. If he's folding back in there to make a play, you can either ask that F to try to dig him out. You could possibly throw a pop to that, even if you have the back going this way. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't make an out call when I was running that one. Uh, I would probably keep our tackle on because I wouldn't want to give that, that B-gap player a free look at my quarterback, but we could pop it, and, and we've done that. We, when we pop it, we often move the back to the front side and do it right in there, or we can keep the key on, get him blocked. He folds inside, and, and hopefully now we've got you know, an F with the ball, a block by our X on the corner, and a, a sa deep safety who's got to make that tackle. So a um, couple different things. Again, the base way to run it is with the key, but we can make a block call, and we could possibly go F pop there and pop off of that guy if he's becoming a problem inside that B gap. So we've got Bruin and Bull checking away from the fourth rusher, uh, which we like. We've got the out call to block out on the edge rusher, and read the B-gap. Uh, our next answer against the 3-4 defense is to attach a tight end. Um, and when we do attach a tight end, we often use a flip call, which aligns the back to the play side. We pop the force defender, or we can block the most dangerous man in those situations. And again, I like this as a way to attack a 4-I or a B-gap defensive end that might be giving us some problems chasing things down from behind. So the first thing to look at here, um, we like to put the formation into the boundary, or the Y into the boundary against the 3-4 defense, and go ahead. So attach that tight end into the boundary, and now we're just going to call for us. The terminology is dual left tight. So that's how we get into that. Our Y is usually a big enough kid to attach down in there. If you had to replace your, your spread Y with a tight, tight end, you could do that. 
Our guy is usually big enough to block that position adequately. He's not going to kill you, but he should do a decent job there. Um, if the defense is in a too high look, so now that 4-I is into the boundary, we don't know how this outside linebacker is going to play. Is he a D-gap player forcing the ball back into the C, or is he a C-gap player spilling it out to possibly the corner safety type deal? So um, this play probably doesn't end up in the A-gap, doesn't end up in the B-gap, but becomes a C to D-gap play for us. So we're in dual left tight. The offensive line is running bull. And there's a flip call, which flips the tail back to the play side. Now, some of the advantages about the flip call are now that Mike linebacker who's looking at this tailback, he sees tailback starting to head on his zone path, okay, and he sees the guard blocking down. Looks an awful lot to the Mike like his own play. So he may come over the top a little bit, and then as your back starts to wind it back, your guard gets pretty good leverage where gets a few extra steps on the mic out here in the C D gap. So that's one of the reasons we like the flip alignment when we're trying to run the ball. We think we're going to be able to run it C D gap. Um, our Z in this case would have most dangerous man. If they're playing quarters to the field and halves to the boundary, usually that most dangerous man is the corner and the safety is off. Or if they play some type of quarters look here where maybe they're manning up your Y and manning up your Z, he may end up trying to crack on that free safety there. So that's a skill that, uh, a skill and a recognition we have to work on with our outside receivers is blocking most dangerous man. He's going to try to figure out who the force player is in this defense and get that guy blocked, and then we'll go one-on-one -on -one with whoever has the deep, the deep zone or is the softer, softer guy out there. So for us, dual left tight, bull, we're going to call it. We're going to run it into the boundary. Flip brings our tail back here, gets downhill, and winds it back. And we talk to him about using that guard as your shield, okay? And whichever way that guard takes the second-level defender, you're either coming inside of that or outside of it. This is where your guards helps if they're a little bit athletic. They're coming around the horn here, and now they have to read open B-gap open C gap to figure out where the best insertion is um, for this play. Okay, same play, dual left tight bull flip. Again, we're not looking to check this when we've attached the tight end here. All right, we're in the flip call. Now they're bringing the edge rusher from the field. They're playing a one high look. Okay, so here comes that free edge rusher. And Again, now the backside tackle is going to have to cut off the B-gap defender. We're going to double the nose guard to the backside linebacker. We're going to pull it around, and this time, generally, if the pressure is coming from this side, this end is probably a six technique. So now that guard should pull up in the B-gap on the linebacker, and our tailback is again going to use the guard as his shield. He's looking to hit it downhill in the A-gap to the B-gap, and they should have the C and D-gaps defended. So this play should be somewhere A to B for us. And um, this is a pretty good look here. The only concern you have is that Sam linebacker, is he going to be able to bend flat and make the tackle? The teams that we play, we haven't seen that guy flat enough to make a play on this. If you did get a Sam that was bending really hard, okay, you might have to move the tail back over to this side and read him. And, and that's not, you know, that's not terrible. Uh, the reason we like putting the tail back here is, again, screw, screw with that Mike linebacker's read. He's going to see the guard blocking what looks like zone. He's going to see the tail back what, what, what looks like zone to the right. And then next thing you know, that guard's going to be around the horn on him, and, and the tailback's coming right downhill at him. So we like the flip look. We could put the back over here, but, but this has been pretty good for us. Um, the other thing that you could do, and can be a little risky, but could give you a big play as you could pop the Z in this situation, especially when this secondary is rolled to the field like they are. So instead of blocking most dangerous with the Z, have Z run a pop route. Quarterback is looking at it. All right? If he gets that slant ball off, that mic should be getting downhill. All right? We're blocking on here. You have a nice open, open seam to throw that ball and hit a potential big play. But 
You also have the negative of getting sacked by that edge rusher, so he would have to get that that pop off pretty quick or hand it off pretty quick. He doesn't have a lot of time to make that decision. Um, we've looked at that in practice and, and stayed away from it just because we didn't like um, we didn't like the timing of it. I think it's feast or famine. It's either a potential touchdown or a sack turnover, and uh, we weren't going to take the chance of, of that sack turnover. All right, some other things that we can do now. We can still stay in dual left tight, but now we can run the play to the field. All right, so now we're going to run Bruin flip, and here we will pop the F because now we're protecting the quarterback's backside. So once you've taught this blocking scheme for your inside five guys, you have a lot of flexibility in how you run the play. So Bruin flip. Tackle's going to take the end inside or outside, wherever he goes. Double the nose to the backside linebacker. Pull the guard around. We'll pull check here with the uh, backside tackle on the end. We'll keep the tight end on. The Y has got on block. We're in flip, so here comes the tailback downhill. And this is the guy, especially in a too high look, that we won't be able to handle. So depending on the look out here will be how we would run the F pop. If this is a quarters type defense where that safety is kind of on the F and the F recognizes the safety's got him man vertical, he'll run that pop more like a slant route. All right, three steps and slant. So if this Sam linebacker attacks the line of scrimmage, it's coming right in the quarterback's face. Quarterback pulls the ball, dumps it to the F, and we're off to the races. Um, we, For us, this is a concept we build to. Uh, one of the plays that we like out of trio is Colt 95. So out of, out of trio right, we'd run Colt odd with the tailback coming across the formation, and we'd read a linebacker. We'd read the sixth man for handoff or stick. So this is something our quarterbacks have practiced. They're good at If we just decide game week that this is something that we wanted to go with, I'd feel comfortable and confident that our quarterback could execute this because it's a base technique of riding the tailback and reading an off-the-ball defender for a potential pop. So that's a nice way to incorporate a, a run-pass concept into your downhill power, power play. Okay, here's another example of, of adding a pop to it. Um, we're running Bruin now to the tight end side, and, and maybe we see that this team is going to roll down to the field, and we, we'd have this, uh, you know, we'd have the Y to the boundary, excuse me, Y to the field, F to the boundary if they were rolling down to the field, or we knew they were always going to roll down to our tight end if we were running a lot inside here. Um, now you can see we're running the Bruin play. Since the safety's rolling down here, this is probably this Sam is the rush linebacker. The end's probably the B-gap guy. So we end up washing that end down. The nose is probably a backside A-gap player, so that double team, the guard gets off and closes off that linebacker. Again, backside guard is a skip-pull guy. He's reading it B-gap to C-gap to D-gap. He would see... A cloudy B gap, he'd get a little more width, get up in the C for the Mike linebacker, and the backside tackle would check the end. It's a flip call for the quarterback. So here comes our downhill tailback, and we would tell the quarterback if we were going to put a pop on the front side where there's a Y attached, all right, our pop key becomes the safety. All right, if this was man coverage, the pop would look like a slant, rough. For us, in zone coverage, we just we send that guy on an angle inside for five yards, and then we try to get him vertical. So if that safety came down real hard in zone, we'd be running our pop angle at him, get vertical, and hope to sneak that ball in right behind him for a big run. If it was man coverage, now how does, he, how does the outside receiver recognize? If he has the corner's eyes, we're going to read that as man coverage. If the corner's eyes are inside, he'll probably treat it like zone, but if he has the corner's eyes, we'll treat that like man. He'll run his slant route, and again, we're trying to hit that same vacated area if that strong safety comes downhill hard. Um, Pre-snap our quarterback progression, as it always is, 
check out the key. All right, if he really likes the key, this would probably be a roll to, to one high, corner off, apex linebacker, cover three. Hey, we may never get to any of this because we're going to throw that key screen out here. If it's cover one and they're manning us up and, and they're not deep at the corner spot, well, then we probably stay off of that key. We come back to the front side. All right, he's got his Bruin flip with a Z pop. So he's going to put the ball in the tailback's belly and get his eyes on that safety. That safety rolls down and, and really attacks the line of scrimmage to be the extra run defender, to be the guy we can't block. We, look to, we can look to pull the ball and make that throw. Again, you have in the eight-man box, you have an extra guy that you can't block when they roll down to cover three. You can either try to block him with a wide receiver or pop him with a wide receiver. Those are really the, the two ways that he can be handled on this play and in this situation. If by chance we luck out and they roll the safety the other way and roll down here, okay, then you can see we've got a lot of green grass. And if this play was in the game plan and they rolled the safeties the other way, I would certainly tell that quarterback, hey, if that safety got to the middle of the field, either choice would be good for him. Um, Throw the pop, we expect you to complete it. If not, we hand the ball off, and, and we think we should have a pretty good run. If the pressure is coming from this side, again, we expect this end to be a six technique, so now we expect that ball would probably hit up here in the B gap. We're doubling the nose. Nose is probably working to the front side, so the guard would have most of him. All right, we'd probably look to push that, or we would look to push this with as much vertical push here to bubble that backside linebacker over the top. Again, backside linebackers, I've been really surprised how slow they are uh, the last couple years against us because we pop behind them so often. We, we've thrown enough pop passes where backside linebackers are a little bit more hesitant than they used to be before we started running our, our run-pass option stuff. Your only issue here would be protecting the quarterback's backside. Get the ball handed off get the pop thrown before you get hit in the back. And, uh, and you have to make a decision how good that player is, how fast he is, how aggressive he is. If he's a guy you think that's going to go hit that quarterback in the back, then, then you stay away from any front side pops unless you have a tight end protecting him. Okay. So if we want to run the, the Bruin and Bull, the one-back power out of three and one, we, we don't run it as much out of the three and one against, um, against the three-four defense unless we can predict where that fourth rusher is going to be. In, in one of our games last year, we knew where the fourth rusher was coming from every time, and we schemed it up and, and had a lot of success with it. Uh, but that's, that's your number one concern when you're in a three and one trio set with no attached tight end. When you attach the tight end, then it doesn't matter quite as much where the fourth rusher is coming from, and you can be a little bit more creative. Depends on your personnel and who you have at tight end. So um, this was the play that won our league championship game for us. We stayed in our, 11, uh, our 10 personnel. We put trio to the field. We've always been a big key two team to the trio, so they decided they were going to play us in man-free. They were uh, a version of, the, of Seattle Seahawks. Every snap of the game was man-free for them. So we had three-on-three three here. Basically, these guys defended the key all day. We had man on the backside. Okay, we ran him off all day. Um, often, we, we allow our quarterback to take the gift or the fade against the single receiver side when we're in the, running the zone play. Normally, we don't do that in the Bruin and Bull play. Again, just a little concerned about how quickly that edge rusher could get there. And, and especially if I have an off corner, I don't want to throw a hitch route into a free edge rusher. That's something I don't like. Um, so I don't like the guy getting his hands up, batting the ball, getting the thing picked. So if we were going to allow our quarterback to throw the gift into the boundary, we would always – either be running the stretch play into the boundary or the zone play into the boundary where we're going to get a hat on that free edge rusher. So in this case, that wasn't an option. We just ran him off. We had the key out here. 
All right, we had our six-man box that we knew we were going to get, um, and all game this team decided they were going to bring the fourth rusher from the boundary against our three-and-one set. So the field defensive end, he was in a six, didn't want to let anything outside of him. We were able to double the nose to the backside linebacker, pull our backside guard up on the Mike linebacker, and, and we hit a lot of good runs here in the A-B gap. Again, this edge blitzer, in most cases, is assigned to the quarterback. This four technique, who's coming hard into the B gap, well, the thing about him is you don't have to worry about the ball hitting in this backside A gap, so your guy can keep him on the line of scrimmage. Eventually, he should run into the nose guard and not be able to get over the top and make the play. Uh, so that was real important for us. We did not have a great running quarterback against uh, this team. We practiced the out call a lot. Um, the one time we ran the out call, what we got from them was end outside. Will comes underneath. The quarterback basically shit his pants on it. We had practiced it during the week, but you know he was a little unsure as to what he wanted to do with the ball, and he actually put it on the ground, and that was the only time we ran it in that in the ball game. Uh, as great as it looked in practice, again, our guy wasn't a great runner. We didn't execute it the one time we called it in the game. We stayed with the base Bruin uh, all game, and that was very successful for us against this particular look. Other options we've liked throughout the year, um, we can go trio right tight. So now we attach the tight end to the three receiver side. All right, we ran Bruin flip and then we can F pop it, or I think I have a slide later, we can key to it. But if we decide to F pop, where I would like to do that, um, here if I've got that guy coming on a four technique, they're playing cover three, so they're bringing the fourth rusher as the Sam. Your Y takes the Sam in or out. If the Sam's an outside D-gap player, we wall him out. If Sam decides to stuff it down in the C-gap, we will lock him down and take the play one hole wider. The right tackle blocks their defensive tackle, defensive end. He's in the B gap. We watch that. We expect the nose to be a backside A gap player, so we should be able to cut off the backside linebacker with our front side guard. All right, we have our check technique on the backside, and again, he would have most dangerous. So that stunt that I just diagrammed for you, where we get this and this, he's checking the B gap, stepping down, so now he would have the will on that. All right, and that's just a base check technique that, that everybody uses on power. We've used that for years. Um, checking the B gap, we let the C gap defender go. So we're in flip. What is that Mike linebacker seeing? He's seeing the tailback heading on his own path. He's seeing the guard blocking on his own path or similar to his own path. So he hopefully is a little slower to the edge, and we get right back in here with the tailback and follow our guard. If we are popping it, we're going to pop off that strong safety because we have a tight end detached. Again, red would be man coverage, strong safety right on top of the F. All right, run a man beater, which is your slant route. All right, if we're apexed, all right, so we're real tough to block now. He's apexed and sneaking inside. Now we run our zone pop, which is an angle toward his initial alignment and getting vertical. Uh, one of the reasons we don't just run down the field, all right, I always get concerned about that ball being a little bit too deep and, and too deep safeties or safeties being a factor on that. So you know, basically on most of our pops, we're going to take a little bit of an angle before we get vertical, all right? usually about a five-yard angle run before we get vertical, and that keeps that ball completed in the 10-yard area before those safeties can really get involved and be a factor. If you wanted to on this play, if you look at the defense, you could eliminate the pop read. If you don't like run pass options, if that's not, you know, your quarterback's not a thrower, excuse me, if, if you don't like, yeah, your run pass options, he's not a great thrower, you can have that F just come down and make the block there. So you have a couple different ways you can run this play um, based on the talent of your personnel. If we got a too high look, here's where we get a little bit confused sometimes. This Y. He, you know, he's not sure who to block at times when there's nobody above him. So we basically give him two choices depending on how 
type this guy is playing, you can go out and help on him, and we can double it. And this this would be a case where we decided, hey, we were just going to try to double that guy and, and get that taken care of. Or based on game plan and based on who they are, we've doubled inside with the Y, all right, right here. Let me see if I can get my highlighter there. Okay, so he can double here or he can double out there based on what he feels, based on where this guy is and where that guy is. We've kind of given him an option on that. Now, based on your numbers here, they probably walk the linebackers a little bit. You're still doubling to the backside linebacker, and he might work himself over into a stack position if they're playing too high and uh, against this look. All right, your backside guard still got the Mike linebacker. If it's a too high defense, we think the edge pressure is coming from the boundary. So this is a six technique in contain. So we may have put the back over here so we can read that backside rusher, and then we stick the ball right up in there. And again, sometimes with the Y, if this defensive end is a tough guy, it helps to, to be able to double team him, get a little bit bigger piece there, knock that back into the Mike linebacker a little bit. Probably not a primary play for us if we're seeing a lot of too high looks. That's not the first option, that, you know, one of the ones I might even include in the game plan. All right, the next formation we get to with a tight end attached is our tray formation. All right, that's the tight end as a single receiver and our three receivers away from him. All right, in this case, we're in tray left. We're running Bruin flip and we can go F-pop here, all right? Bruin flip with F-pop. So now the inside stuff is the same, okay? The blocking scheme's the same. We're protecting the quarterback's backside, so we're a little more comfortable throwing pops to the front side because you have a tight end behind. In this situation, that defensive tackle's headed inside. Our off offensive tackle's going to wash him down. The guard's going to read that, come around the horn for the mic, and there's your pop key. He is the issue on the play. If he closes hard to tackle the run, quarterback can pull the ball and stick it to the F right there. If he covers your F, now you're good on a handoff, and he'll react back to the run late, but now you've got your tail back you know, with some movement up the field right, with a four- or five-yard gain probably before he gets tackled. Um, I think this was a play I copied over, so if we were running F-pop, we would put X on the key. We would have the Z outside receiver block the corner. So, um, yep, Z would be blocking the corner, and X would not be running a smoke hitch. He'd be running his key there, and we would pop the F inside like so. If we wanted to run the play the other way, now we've got Trey left, and we can go bull here, okay? We might go bull out if we think he's coming and we think the pressure's coming from the field here, all right? Put a key game out here. We don't have to pop it. We can always key it, all right? And now, since the rush is coming from the field, we expect a six technique end into the boundary. So the, the run should hit up in the B gap, six technique, Probably a D-gap player. The nose is coming this way. We'll double him, trying to get off to that Mike linebacker, and we're up here on the buck. We're backside linebacker. The nice thing about this is now the free hitter is a cornerback, often in this defense, a cornerback in the B-gap. We think that's a win for the offense if the defense has to have a corner making a tackle in the B-gap. That's going to be a pretty good one for us. If this end slash tackle pinches hard and follows your guard and causes the quarterback to pull the ball, well, now you have your tackle leading out on the Sam and a great running lane right there in the B-gap for your quarterback. Again, good running quarterback. This Mike linebacker saw the guard and the tailback going opposite, so your quarterback should have a good chance against that Mike to at least get you four, five, six, seven yards uh, inside on the run. The other option that we do, and I don't think we, we didn't do it last year, but our quarterback does have the option on some of his keeps that if he wants to throw a late key, he would. 
In this case, I don't think we would do that because we're a downhill B-gap runner. That would be more when we were outside on the edge. But if, uh, if he made the decision to pull the ball and the mic showed up right away and he avoided outside, he can still throw a late key. That's something that, that our guys practice and work on. Um, three years ago, we had a guy who was great at it. The last two years, that wasn't a strength of our kid, and, and we didn't throw the late keys. But uh, it all depends on what your quarterback is capable of. Okay, if you're looking for a, a one-week trickum formation, this was actually good for us on more than one week. We would go into an unbalanced look. We put all our receivers on one side. Okay, we try to keep the box consistent, but we put all four receivers out to one side. We would often come off the sideline in this. Uh, on a first down of a series, we're on the sideline. We come out for the first play, run all four receivers out to one side, ready, set, go, and we're off. Um, if you are a sideline huddle team, I think this is an important thing to note as the play caller. Make sure you keep your team on the sideline until the official blows the ball ready for play. I can't tell you how many times uh, during the year we had the officials looking at us on the sideline and waiting for us to send our team out before they would blow the ball ready for play. And, and I'd look at the referee. I said, you, you know, you've got to go first. So um, we'd get the official to, to blow the ball ready for play. Then we'd rush out there, and now we can run that first play, you know, and you know, get lined up and run it within five seconds, which uh, was a real good uh, advantage for us. So... Those are the diagrams we have. Um, got a few minutes here to watch some film. Uh, Mike, do we have any questions that need to get answered? All right, I'm going to keep rolling in. Okay. So here you have trio to the field, single receiver into the boundary. This was our cover one team. Three guys in man coverage, deep middle safety, and man coverage on the backside. This was their dude right here, their edge rusher into the boundary. He was, he was their best player. Um, fortunately for us, he was assigned to our quarterback, who was not our best runner on every play. So we get the one back power handed off and get it up the field for, for a pretty good run. Right, give you a look at the tight copy here. Again, 11 to, to our left as we're looking at. He's the edge rusher. So we know, our guys knew this week in game planning, this was going to be a six. The nose was probably coming to the strong A. This end was coming inside. You can see our guard's going to take that. Our guard knew that guy was coming to him. Our center's got his eyes up trying to push to number 28. The linebacker's coming downhill. The guard's going to kick him out. And on the backside, can't really tell you how well we made our check block against that B-gap player, but there is just no room for him to get involved in the play. Right? He eventually runs into the down block on the center, and we're able to sneak that thing through there. Okay, another look, same game, and uh, again, we were we were fortunate against this team in that we we knew what they were going to do. They kind of believed in their scheme and their system. I think our receivers often just block those guys. Some they were, could either run them off or block them in this game because we knew they were playing their man coverage. We could run our key look. So there, we're taking the six out. We're doubling the nose. The backside guard is on number 44. Eleven's got the quarterback. And again, we've got the backside linebacker trying to get over the top. Our guard tackles him. That's a pretty good tackle. Didn't get called, which was nice. And, and we've got a good positive five and six yard gain on first down. Here's another one down in the red zone. You know, we got receivers to occupy. We knew we had man coverage. We had receivers occupying guys there. 
All right, the free edge rusher has the quarterback. Let him take him. There's your tight copy. Get a pretty good double team here. Again, we're cutting that off, trapping that linebacker. A to B to C is how we coach the tailback. So in this game, everything was A to B for him. So that was one game. And again, just about every time we saw a three down front, we had a different idea for how we wanted to run this play, depending on what they did. Get this back to the beginning. So here's a different three down team. And this week we decided we were going to put the Y to the field and make him the tight end. We have two receivers out here. So for us, this is trio tight. There's our backside X receiver. And we made a flip call. So we put the tailback to the play side. So this is going to be the Bruin play. One back power to the right. I think we keyed it up on the outside. So here you get a good look. Here's your 4i. Again, the 4i issue that a lot of coaches are concerned about. He's a B-gap player. So now we're doubling the nose to the backside. The Y is going to block out, and we should have a great running lane here. Okay, guard comes around a little too fast, a little too wide. He's actually going to overrun his block there, and he'd like to score a touchdown, that guard. He's uh, a frustrated fullback. But you get a good look. Now, this linebacker, I'm not sure why he's as close to the middle as he is, but that, that block by the center, the double team and the tailback action right now, you can see 54 is thinking this is probably a zone play to his right. And he takes a good hop step over to the right, which we don't block him. Now, how many times do you get a good run when you do not block the front side linebacker? But the deception of the flip, having him come across, gets that guy to move. We had a guard for him, but the guard gets way too wide. So here's another look, same type of formation, trio tight. Instead of popping it, in this game we were keying it. And again, you make those game decisions on, on what you see. So we were going to run key two out here. And I, I know when I was calling this play, our quarterbacks were more in tune to handing the ball off. We throw a lot more keys in the zone game than we do on the Bruin and Bull play. In this game, you know, a lot of times he kind of knows if coach is calling Bruin and Bull, he want, I want to run the ball if we can. They're going to roll a backside safety down to be the edge blitzer into the boundary. So they're coming from the boundary. He's too late to get there to make any kind of a play. And we stick that all the way out in the C gap. Here's your end zone look. And again, you get that four eye here. Our center is doing a very nice job. I can see by the stripe of his helmet, he's aware of that backside linebacker. So he gets off for that. That young man's only a sophomore doing a heck of a job for us. Backside check tackle. There's another sophomore gets his head Pretty close to his play side number where it needs to be. Like to see him a little more inside, a little flatter on that. But let's run these guys down into the pile. You can see that the guard understands, and you know, some plays he's up in the B gap. He understands he's got to be a little bit wide. He just overdoes it here. He doesn't get quite a, quite tight enough um, as we'd like him to be. But now that one back power ends up bouncing all the way out into the C-gap. We 
Okay. Get a couple more real quick in this game. Now we're running bull to the left. We've got a key screen up to the left. This is uh, middle, late third quarter. We're ahead and trying to trying to milk the clock a little bit here, run the football. All right, our quarterback, if he had vision here right now, pre-snap, he probably says three over two. He's too tight to throw the key. But as it turns out, they bring an extra guy, and we could have had, possibly had a good key screen throw. He chooses to hand the ball off. I'll never yell at him for that. And we get a four or five yard run out of it. Take a look at the tight, because here you get a little bit of a missed assignment by this Y. He's not sure as to where he should be going. We're good with a one-on-one -on -one block with the tackle. The Y should have jumped out on that outside blitzer here. That really is the Sam linebacker. Okay, so if, if our tight end blocks out, then we hit that much cleaner here. Our guard really is not ready to react to this, to the linebacker being blocked and the edge rusher being free. So we kind of mess that up a little bit, but again, still end up bouncing the ball outside, and getting a nice run. Okay, and this is the last one I want to show you in this game because we've been bouncing this play out to the CD gap. Little check with me situation here, fourth quarter. We're trying to run the football. Okay, so here's your tight. And now we see this guy starting to creep down. We've got a six technique out here. Linebackers are plussed over to the field a little bit. So if you watch that center guard, left guard, center combination, 63, he's got his eyes on the backside linebacker. This guy has no idea about the guard pulling. He's probably keying backs because he comes downhill. So 63, the center bounces off. Easy block to maintain C and D gap here. So now the puller is tight, and 55 does a much better job than the other kid of getting tight on his pull. Tailback knows it's A to B to C to D. So he's tight. Stay right down in that lane right there, which he, he ends up cutting back to it. Not sure he should, if he ever should have come out of it, but he gets downhill, picks up a nice first down. We're trying to kill the clock in, in four-minute offense. So here's the trick em formation. Now we're coming out with four, four receivers to one side. We're in an unbalanced set. This is the man coverage team. We should be running key three here. Okay, I'm not sure if I, I key three or I blocked it here with these guys or just let them run it off. We, we blocked them. But just something against this team, it really didn't affect them all that much because they were, they were a man-to-man -man team. Uh, when we see some zone teams later, it, it gives them a little bit more of a problem. So when you see it from the tight, okay, there's our tailback. This is the bull play. The tailback starts across the formation. And again, A to B to C to D. He's got an open A gap there. Comes back into it. We're able to get the backside linebacker cut off. And it's a good downhill run, seven, eight yards late in the game that we were ahead in. Okay, here's a little more of that four-man formation. And again, something we liked when we were ahead in the ball game. There's our Y. There's our three receivers running a little bit of key three there. This is a third down and three, so our quarterback, in fact, earlier in the game, he threw a key in a third and short, and he didn't complete it. So um, I know he was very concerned about getting yelled at about that, so uh, third and three, he may have had the key, but he was going to hand the ball off in this situation.
And then the other thing is we're we're later in the game here again, which is when we like this play a lot more. You've got the four eye technique here. You've got a D gap player, so this ball should end up in the C. Twelve doesn't quite get across the ball as much as our other running back thirty four did. He's very much downhill. I'd like this to look a little bit more first three steps as if he's heading across the ball. Now, this one was much earlier in the season than those other two games that I showed you. Watch 76. All right, feet are bad on his skip pull. We like to take a little bucket when we skip pull to get some depth. You can see his, his right foot never moves. We're... We're a bucket skip pull team there. And what happens to him? He runs into the down block of the tackle. All right, that game again, the last two games that you saw, right, he was getting out there much faster, getting around things. All right here he runs into that. But because of the tailback's angle downhill, the front side linebacker just kind of gets caught up in the mess. And uh, actually there is no front side linebacker because we're in a, we're in a four wide receiver set out there, a four to one side unbalanced. So we formation them into an issue, and uh, and that makes it a much better play for us. Same game. And we'll give you one more of that unbalanced look. Again, the unbalanced look causes you to get some funky situations up front. Here there's nobody on our offensive tackle. They're trying to move guys. But it's happening late. They're not sure what's going on. So we get a down block. He says, well, let me go get him, which is the right decision to make. And now we've got the free puller up on a safety. And we can hit that thing right outside. There we go, real quick, lining everybody up. We get some adjustment. Could he have thrown a key out here? Eh, the numbers aren't bad. Wouldn't have been a bad play. We could have doubled 25, not worried about him. He's 10 yards deep. He's an apex. So if our quarterback had thrown that key screen out front, I think we would have had a pretty good play if he had pulled that and thrown it. And you can see one of the things we ask our guy to do whenever he does hand the ball off, because we are a run-pass option team, we always ask our quarterback to fake a throw afterward. Even if we get half a step or one step out of the defense, that's something we really like. Okay, Manuel, I've got some more tape, but I think my hour's up. Um, you guys have any questions? Uh, Mike, are you on the air with us? You have a uh, moderating any questions? Yeah, we've got some questions, Coach. Good job. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, first question from a coach is, uh, do you have any play action passes off of the fold play or just pops and screens, key screens? We have um, – we don't have any play actions with that – um, fold blocking scheme. Um, we have a Z Zulu act and zebra act, which is off our inside zone action. And so I, th I feel like we get the same thing out of the back, uh, out of the backfield action with that. So we have not put in a play action off of that. We're just popping and keying off of it. Okay. Next question. Uh, what's the, uh, talk to us about the footwork for quarterbacks and running backs. The footwork on the base Bruin and Bull play is exactly the same as your inside zone. Um, the alignment is behind the backside guard. Okay. Um, it's an open, if I'm the running back, it's an open step with my inside foot, crossover with my right knee. It's not a full crossover, but it's, it's inside foot, outside foot, and inside foot um, is where we're going with that. Our aiming point, initial aiming point, especially against the Oki front, should be the same as our inside zone play, which is on the opposite side of the center. So he should be, if we're running bull, he should be aiming for the center's left cheek until he gets the ball. Once he gets the ball, that's when he's going to turn back. Um, he's going to turn back and follow that guard. Uh, quarterback is going to catch the ball and get his feet pointed at the read, which is the end man on the line of scrimmage or the B-gap rusher if it's an out call. Very good. Next question is, how much of your game planning is based on hash or ball position on the field? A lot of what we do on the hash. My, uh, 
my hash mark study, um, I haven't done one for uh, 15, but my 14 hash mark study had us on the hash 71% of the time. So a lot of what we do is based on being on the hash, and, and it's also based, so, and based on um, you know, what defenses are doing. Are defenses field defenses? Are they hash defenses? Um, you know, boundary, we don't see much boundary defense, but um, how are they defending the field? Are we better off in three and one? Are we better off in two and two when the ball's on the boundary? Um, so we, we look at what the defense's field tendencies are uh, and, and look how our formations best, uh, best fit into that. But I was really surprised at how much time we spent um, with the ball on the hash. Now, we're, we're very willing to run the ball into the boundary. That's, that's the other thing is, you know, in our offense, we run it into the boundary. We throw it into the boundary. Um, you know, if you give us one-on-one -on -one matchups there, we're, we're happy to take advantage of that. Um, and then we, we do spend a lot of time in trio to the field. And one of our big plays there is key screen to the field. And what we end up is going from hash to hash at, at times. So we can end up, you know, one play on the left hash, next play on the right hash. If we throw another key, it's back to the left hash. So sometimes we'll end up just pounding into the boundaries. Other times we'll end up bouncing from hash to hash based on, on what the defense has given us. One of the most important things for coaches who are running a, a tempo offense and you're practicing your tempo offense, um, I call every team offensive series in practice from the sideline. And I have a list of plays um, that we're going to call in a specific order, but the order, when, when I have the list of plays, I have the play with the formation to the, to the right and formation to the left based on whichever hash that the, the ball ends up on. And, and that's a real important part of practice for me as the play caller because I've got to get the right call in based on which hash the ball is on. Or if, and usually we have one day where we practice hashes, uh, and, and most of our drives we practice hashes, but at least one drive during the week, you know, one six plays down, six plays back, we'll make sure we put the ball in the middle all the time so we get to, to practice those plays. But a lot of times as a play caller, i got to make sure I've got the, the trio to the field and, and, or the, the formation to the you know, um, trio to the field or dual to the boundary, whatever formation I want, i got to make sure I get that in and the right play called at a high rate of speed. So it's important for me to practice during that, that during the week as much as it is for the kids to get their work in. Very good. Coach, talk us through a technique for a skip pull. How, how deep should the skip pull be? Deep enough to get around the penetration. Um, and the skip pull against the Oki defense, because we're doubling the nose, it doesn't necessarily have to be quite as deep. We'll, we'll get an inside, you know, we'll get a, an inside bucket step. We cross over on the second step, and then we tell them, you know, from there you're running, all right? It's, it's bucket, crossover, and run. Now, when we're pulling and we don't have, um, we don't have a nose guard defense, a lot, of, a lot of our other skip pulls, because of our wider splits, we might give up a little bit of penetration. So um, when we're skipping on the shark play, when we're skipping on Giants, sometimes we're getting a little bit deeper. Um, but the guard against the 3-4 defense, when we've got a double team on the nose, it's the one time that we, we don't have to get quite as much depth. But uh, because we were shark team first, you know, our, uh, our O-line coach got into teaching it with a, a bucket step with your play side foot, then we cross over, and then we run. And, and that depth is really based a little bit on play. Okay, thanks, Coach. All right, so this is kind of an add-on question to that. Um, coach wants to know, uh, do you think you're leaning more toward pull concepts than, than a pure zone right now? Uh, says uh, that with the end zone, typically the inside zone is the base, but what are your thoughts? Absolutely. We are an inside zone team first. This play is, the, is a complementary play to our inside zone. Um, you know, if I – and I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I'd say we ran inside zone six times more than this. For every for every one of these, we ran six inside zones. So um, I think you have to be able to run the inside zone. I think if you try to, you know, a couple coaches have asked me over the years, I don't have a big offensive line, so, I, you know, I, I can't run inside zone. We, we think you have to have it no matter what because it is 
it is the basis of the offense. And, uh, we're, you know, we're not mauling guys in our zone game, and uh, but we, we got to be able to get on guys and cover up. And if you have, you know, if you're seeing a four-down team and you have small guards and, you know, they're better than you at those two defensive tackle spots, well, you know, your zone might not be quite as effective that week, but but you still, I, I still think it needs to be a part of what you do. Um, all of our game planning comes off of how is the defense going to stop our zone in key game. Um, that's the basis of, of every game plan is what is their adjustment going to be to stop zone and key against us. And then, you know, against our formation, against this formation, how are they going to stop zone and key? And then what are our couple complementary plays off of that? So um, while we like this, this Bruin and Bull play, we think it's a nice, a, a nice play and we got a lot out of it. Um, it's still a com- in my opinion, a complimentary play. Great answer, Coach. Do you have uh, Do you have time for a couple more questions? Yeah, I got all night. I got a cold <laughs> beer here, and uh, good to go. Very good, very good. Well, we're gonna do two more questions, and then uh, Coach Acosta is here with us as well, and he's gonna jump on for just a second, and then we'll wrap up. Okay, so uh, Coach asks, can you briefly tell us what you do when you get a four-two box? Yes. Um, the uh, it changes a little bit. A four-two box. Let me just. I have a couple of those. So, Oki stack, and we treat the Oki stack similar to the four-two box in game planning. So, if you get a four-two box and you have this play, um, what do teams do to stop your inside zone? They're going to put the three technique to the back. All right, so we want to attack that B-gap bubble. So what we're going to do is we're going to block the six on. We're going to block the guard on the nose. We're going to block back with the center and pull the guard for the front side linebacker. Now, you have six guys in the box, so we're going to pop off of the Mike linebacker on this. Um we would probably, this might not be a primary play for us because we'd probably run our shark play, which, you know, the center would pull up on the will and we'd block these two guys down and still pop the mic. So shark is more the primary play when we see this look, but this is how we would attack the 4-2 box with a three technique to the back. Block the A-gap player, block the C-gap player, pull the puller for the first linebacker, read the mic. If the mic were to run with or match the back is the word I tell my quarterbacks, if he were to either run downhill or match the back over the top, we're going to throw the pop in behind him. So it's a different type of game plan. But, again, it marries in with our our shark wide pop. So it's a skill our quarterbacks already have. Um, it's just a little bit of a different blocking scheme. If what I had it versus, uh, well, Okay, I have it later in the script. If the three technique is to the play side, so now that the tackle is is to the play side, here's where it gets dicey, and and here's why it took us a while to to start running this play. So now I've got a three here. Okay, well you don't want to stick the ball in this a gap and pop the mic. It's too easy for him to play both. So now we're going to double the three to the front side linebacker. So it's different than traditional power. This is actually a Texas call. So we get a three technique front side, Texas, Texas. We double the three to the front side backer, the will, and now it turns into trap on the end, and it stays as a B-gap run, and we still can read the Mike linebacker. So I know I have it drawn up. Ah, there it is. Missed it. Okay, so there's an example. Sorry. Texas call versus a three technique. Double the three to the front side will. Trap with the guard. And now you can still read the Mike linebacker for give or keep. Right? Yes, he can come downhill. All right, right hard through that front side A gap. That would be a great thing for him to do. He's downhill hard in the front side A. If this were a regular power play, the guard would come off on him, but we'd have nobody to block this will linebacker. So we're going to double hard to the will, try to get a good vertical push, 
And if the mic plays into that A gap at all, matches the back, we're going to pull it out and try to throw the pop behind him. So this is not a primary play for us against the 4 2 box. I have to scheme it up and make sure I've got the first look or the best look that I want. But that would be our, our base rule in blocking the 4 2 box is to pop the backside inside linebacker. Very good. Last question here. Uh, do you always backpedal the key receiver? We do. And I think the clips I showed, our key receivers were being a little bit lazy. They, you know, a lot of those clips come, and a lot of times we like to run this Bruin and Bull when they know we're running the football late in games. We're closing out games. It's, it's a big part of our end-of-game offense. We've been running zone all game, you know, for three quarters or two and a half quarters we're running zone. Um, I, I often don't come out with this play uh, un until later in the game. And what happened is it looked like our receivers, I thought, were very lazy on a lot of those keys. But normally we backpedal out hard, and um, it's been very, very good to us. Um, we're completing keys in the range of 90% completion, and I think it's much easier for that kid to catch the football and, and make a play afterward. Um, I think it's a harder throw with the traditional sideways run bubble technique. Um, so we'll always... We'll always pedal key two out. Um, we have bubbled key three at times, and we've also pedaled key three at times. And for consistency's sake, um, I like to pedal it. That might be the one time that, that, you could, that I would cross over run occasionally if I was keying to the number three or even the number four receiver because I want him to get a little bit wider faster. But in general, whenever it's key two, we like the pedal technique and um, – and our base technique against even for key three would be a pedal. Perfect. Well, Coach, thanks so much. You did an awesome job tonight. Before we jump off the call, uh, Coach Acosta is with us, and he's going to say a few things real quick. So let me bring him on. Coach, you there? Coach, can you hear us? He's busy recruiting somebody. Oh. There you go. Coach, coach, you there? Yep. All right, you got it. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, Coach. Well, we might have coach. One second, guys. Let me see if I can get him on. While we're waiting to see if we can get uh, Coach Acosta on real quick, uh, I did hear from Noel tonight, and he's going to speak on a webinar on the 29th, and his topic is going to be new ideas and concepts from UCLA 2015 Spring Ball. So again, that'll be a week from this Wednesday night, the 29th, and uh, he's going to share on concepts and ideas from their Spring Ball 2015. So be sure to sign up for that. We'll, be, we'll get that up on the website, an announcement for that, and an email out to remind you. But it should be a great uh, great night for us. Um, outside of that, guys, we're going to have this webinar up within the week. So you can check back in and uh, uh, watch this again if you'd like. If you have any questions at all, feel free to send them to me. Michael Cantrell, you can send them to questions at championshipsystems.com. One second here. One last little announcement for you. We've got a spring game at UCLA Saturday, 10 a.m. on Pac-12. So be, be sure to tune in, okay? Guys, that's it for tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Coach, for uh, your hard work. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.
All right. Thank you, Michael. Uh, guys, have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email if you're looking to follow up. I'm at uh, dgibbs at rih.org, and uh, be happy to help you in any way we can. Very good. Thanks, Coach. Have a good night.